coon hunt that we conduct, it's going to produce the person. They will be caught. It's just a matter of time. The individual that we're looking for goes by Birdo. Birdo has been put on our most wanted list. We're going to Birdo's girlfriend's house. I do think he's in there. You got two of the vehicles here that he's been known to drive. So that gives us a pretty good indication that Birdo's probably inside. We're looking all over the place and he's right there. We fully expect that he's gonna try to get away from us at every chance he can. You can try to run, you can try to hide, but we're gonna find you. Come to the door, we know you're here. It's the beginning of a long night in Sullivan County, Tennessee. Deputies just received a tip on the possible location of one of their most wanted criminals. A notorious drug dealer known on the streets as Berto. Tonight, it's up to Deputy Travis Jackson and his team to find him. Where we're going now is where we believe Roberto's staying. It's going to be at this lady named Judy's house. So we think he's been staying out here because a couple of different people's mentioned that to us. Berto was previously convicted of assault, possession of cocaine, and resisting arrest. This is not Berto's first rodeo. He has been violent in the past. Just about every contact that he has with officers, he runs or fights. Are you alone here right now? I'm just me and my girlfriend. Uh, by chance, is uh, Bart over here? No, sir. You know what I'm talking about? He's, yes, I know who you're talking about, but he's not here. He hasn't been here. I haven't seen him in several days. Here for step in and talk to you. That's little Julie out here. <laughs> There's no reason you shouldn't. Jackson and his team searched the interior and quickly realize the woman and her girlfriend are not alone. Who else is in here? Just my girlfriend, Jessica. Jessica, you want to come up here? I'd yeah. rather y'all stay up here, please. Well, who else is down there? Just Jessica, I saw somebody. that's all. Don't lie to me now. I didn't saw somebody else. You didn't see nobody else down there. There's Jessica down there. Whoever's down there, you can come upstairs. Come on up here. Do you even know who's in your house? Yes, I know who's in my house. Who's this guy? Toby. <laughs> you got an ID on you, man? I don't. Anybody else down there? No, Be honest with me. There's nobody else down there. But deputies aren't buying the woman's story. Who else is in here? Hello. What are you doing? They catch the woman in another lie and find another man wanted on an outstanding warrant hiding in the basement. Didn't you say it was just you and a girlfriend here? Yeah, and my friend is there. That he was here. Is there, is there a reason you're hiding people out? I'm not hiding people. Well, I mean, you didn't tell us they were here. Well, I didn't know that you wanted to know everybody here. Do you know Birdo? I don't, buddy. Black guy with dreads, comes over here in a white car. I don't. So you wouldn't tell us where Birdo was at if you knew, would you? Yes, I would if I knew. I have no idea where he's at. I really don't. If I knew, I would tell you. I believe you, you don't know where he's at. I he's also do. I have no idea what he's driving either. How does he get over here? When he comes, he sometimes comes in a white car, but I don't know what kind it is or anything. Well, since we're all being honest, uh, I have enough to take you to jail for, for harboring these guys. Where you told me that nobody else was here, regardless where they had warrants or not, you were hiding them out, pretty much in the eyes of the law. So I think it would be better for Roberto to go to jail than you. Since we're in this position, uh, how about you give me something? I'll settle for a telephone number. The woman's friend finally surrenders Berto's phone number. That's the last number he, I contacted him on. Deputy Jackson steps outside to give the number a call. Here it is. Number that has been disconnected or no longer in service. She gave us her own number. 
I can speak with you for a second in the back. Okay. Okay, you give me a crap number. That's the last number I had. You're lying. Now I have enough to charge you is what I'm getting at because you give me that crap number. So here's what, what we're gonna do. Get on the phone, get me Roberta. I wanna know where he's at right now. You're fixing to go to jail and you're gonna be in jail for a long time. Hey, what are you doing? I need, Chris is needing to see you like really bad. He's hurting seriously. I'm nowhere near the bed. I'm not coming back from a room or well. The police is looking for me everywhere. Oh, God. Well, no, there ain't been nobody here. Are you too far away that he couldn't come out and meet you? Well, I love you. Just give me a call and let me know you're okay. All right, bro. Finally, Jackson and his team have a new lead to follow. They know Berto's in the area. It's just a matter of finding him. When we leave here, you don't call him and say, hey, mm -hmm. you know, this is the deal. No, because I don't want to go to jail. When we do catch him, mm -hmm. we can look at his phone. I'm telling you, we do this a lot. And when we leave, they call and say, hey, they're looking for you. They just left here, blah, 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 and all that. As long as those stipulations are abide by, I assure you that you and her will not be charged. But if we do find out that you called him when we left, you will be charged. We'll go away. Thank you for everything y'all have done. You're welcome. People usually don't want to give up any of their friends unless they're mad at them or something like that. Come here. But with each and every place you go to, you're getting more and more information. Each and every address is the likelihood increases that they're going to be there. While the search for Berto continues into the night, 70 miles across the mountains in Ash County, North Carolina, Deputy Josh Hoppy Hopkins is paying a visit to one of his regulars. We're going into one of our pretty busy trail parks that we go to a lot. I'm gonna swing by and get a lady. She's, uh, she's funny. Uh, she's in the system constantly, mainly for driving, without a license. God, poor Crystal's been arrested at least 20 times, if not more. What's up? Guess what? I don't want to go to jail tonight. <laughs> yep. Well, you know what it's for. What is it for? No, I've been to all my court cases. Take one guess. What? Driving down the road. <laughs> Come in here. Wait, what is it for? I don't have the warrant. 121. Reference at 29. It's FTA driving while we're good. FTA out of Watauga County for second degree trespass. Ooh, what have you been doing? How much will this bond be? I don't know. I've got a date. A date? Yeah. What happened to your man? <laughs> I can't talk about you cheating on him? That's why you get a good dog. Dog won't cheat on you. That's why I got a dog don't mess around with me, cheat on him. Okay. This is fate. We're saving you from disobeying the law and not being loyal. How long have you been getting arrested for no license? Like 10 years? And I even hate to take you to jail. You're always nice. I hate to. No, I need you to hold this warrant till in the morning. You never get no problem, you just don't stop driving. Then I seen you in the grocery store and you beeped at me while you was driving. Look, no was. Well, I was honest. I gotta leave. You're like saying, hey, Hoppy, look at me, I'm breaking the law again. Golly day. Where are you going? I ain't going nowhere but right here to this bedroom. I'm going to jail. Crystal calls her mother to pick up her daughter. But while on the phone, Hoppy finds something suspicious. Crystal. What? That's not nothing, that's salt water. I promise. Now surely you don't think I was born yesterday. Check it, honey. You can check it, I swear to God, I don't do drugs. Why is it in a prepackaged little bag? Are you trying to pass it off with that? No. Well, you better tell me the truth on this. I swear to God, and I've never told you a lie. 
I, I don't lie to you, and I don't do well, drugs. Well, I, I don't think that you... I didn't think that you did. There's my mommy. Watch out, TC. Hello. Oh. How are you? What is this for? Now, uh, he thinks that's... Like, well, I told him what That is rock, y'all. Can, you can't touch it. Just be still. We're going to test it. God! <laughs> Will she be able to sign her own bond? Oh, my, my, my. If this is salt, we're going to have a long talk about what kind of baggie it's in. It's rocks. Well, I've seen several people cut meth with this, and then they try to sell like they got more meth. I'm gonna test this. <sighs> well. Fortunately for Crystal, the test comes back negative. But one thing is certain, she will still miss her date. I'll be back here in a little while and spend her night at the Ash County Jail instead. Getting the warrant process done. You form a relationship with some people out here. Back in Sullivan County, Deputy Josh Newberry receives an emergency call about a woman in distress. had somebody call in stating that they can hear a female screaming. We're gonna go over there, check the welfare, make sure everything is okay. With no further intel on the situation, Deputy Newberry moves in carefully. Now you definitely want to be cautious of your surroundings while you're making your approach to the house. You definitely don't want to go up to the front door and stand right in front of it. Uh, you, know, you don't want to make yourself a target. No one home. So Newberry searches the property for any sign of the distressed woman. Sullivan County Deputy Josh Newberry is searching for a woman reportedly heard screaming on her property. Uh, hello. Did you call? What's going on? Hold up. Did you call? You call? All right, what'd you hear? Newberry realizes the man is hearing impaired and attempts another mode of communication. Here you go. From what I could gather, the gentleman that came up to the residence has gotten into a fight with a gentleman that he's saying he doesn't know. You, stay here. We'll be back. He said that he ran off into the woods. We're going to see if we can locate the suspect that the gentleman apparently got into a fight with. But he can't find the suspect, so Deputy Newberry heads back to the property where he hears a commotion inside. 471, 347, come back over here. Step out here. <laughs> you, over here. you over here. Turn around for me. I'm gonna pat you down, okay? You're good. Okay, what's going on? He ain't my neighbor. Okay, who is this guy right here? He's my boyfriend. Okay. Who's the guy that he hit? What's his name? Roger. Y'all didn't get so he got into it with this Roger guy? Man, he takes everything. Personal. Right. Like if anybody touches me. Okay, so your boyfriend thinks that the Roger guy's hitting on you, touched on you, something like that, yeah, and they get into a fight. So all this this fight tonight happened right here. Here, he, correct? Right there. Okay. All right, we're gonna talk with him. All right, we'll be back with you and let you know and everything will be fine, okay? Newberry and his backup converge on the neighbor's house.
All right, come on down here, brother. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right, what's going on, man? I walked my dog. Okay, why were you down there? If you're talking about that crazy, uh, her boyfriend or whatever, yeah. he attacked me. So you were walking your dog and he just walked, ran out and attacked you. Is that what you're saying? Pardon me? You want to press charges? No. What are you doing tonight? I was, I was staying home. There you go. Go home. I'm going to make sure he's clear. But the man's not as innocent as he claims. A background check reveals he has two outstanding warrants for violating his probation. All right, we'll take him to jail then. Hey, what's the deal here? You got a warrant. 471. Okay, here's the deal on that assault that took place, okay? You listening? If you decide you want to press charges for an, an assault, okay? I could have damn knocked his lights out. Dumb bastard. Not only dumb bastard is in dumb bastard. I'm telling you right now. Hell, I try to communicate with the end. If you do, let that wait. Meanwhile, back on the other side of town, Deputy Travis Jackson is still trying to track down one of Sullivan County's most wanted men, a known drug dealer named Berto, who's been on the run for several months. We got it on our radar through an informant in the jail that told us that he's been seen up here. A suspicious vehicle catches Jackson's attention. Zero one eight. This man just one. picked somebody up from the area. It's got a brake light out. We're gonna go ahead and stop it and see what they're doing over there. Sorry. While Jackson presses on into the night, over in Ash County, Deputy Josh Hoppy Hopkins races to save a life if he can get there in time. He's threatening suicide. They're unsure if he's got a weapon. It'd be pretty dangerous going in, too, because the uh, person's unstable. Sometimes they'll get nuts on you, and you don't even know why, so. We'll go on up here and see exactly what's going on. There's a knife. Just bar map. Ash County deputies are searching a residence for a suicidal man. They move in cautiously, unsure of what they might find around the next corner. We figured we we're gonna walk in there to a dead body. Spoon? Yeah. Where's the basement at? It's right here. Huh? No really like perfect tactical way to go down uh, dark steps into a house where you can't see anything because if somebody wants you, they've got you when you're coming down the steps. I want to know why you guys are in my house right now. Here. Because your mama was concerned about you. Yeah. Let's look at your arms there for a second. No, we're here to help you. We're here to help you, Nick. We're not going to start this. Get away from me. Let me see your arms, man. Get away from me. Just let's look at your arms. Come on, Nick. We're here to help you. Okay? We're here to help you, man. Come here. Listen, come on. Come on. Okay? Turn around here and talk to him. Come on. Come on. Turn around here. Listen to me, Nicholas. Listen. 
We're here to help you. Where's the blood coming from? Hmm? I don't know. You don't know? Let's see arms, bud. We're trying to help you. You're not in trouble. We're not here to be mean to you. We don't want to hurt yourself. So put your hands on your back, bud. Really? Yep. yep. I'm getting arrested? You're not getting arrested. No. There's a difference. The deputies take him into protective custody for his own safety. It's coming from up. Listen. How'd you get the cuts on your arm? I don't know. Okay. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to take you up to the hospital. Let a doctor look at you. Let somebody come and talk to you and see if we can get you some help. It'll be all right, bud. You're not in no trouble, okay? Uh, he's going to the hospital to be evaluated. Uh, that was a, a pretty serious situation. That could have went a number of different ways. Luckily, you know, he just cut himself. And at the end of the day, I'm going to do everything I can, and I'll leave the rest up to God. Back in Sullivan County, Deputy Travis Jackson and his team step up their search for Berto a wanted drug dealer who's been leading deputies on a wild goose chase. Sheriff's office, open the door. People with warrants are gonna move around at night. We've got a warrant for a guy named Berto. Does that sound familiar? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I don't feel like you're being totally honest with me. Hello. When you go to some of these houses, you don't know if it's their best friend that's gonna lie about them. Do you know where he's at? I have no idea. Does he live here? No, he don't live here. Do you know where he lives? No, I don't know. Or if it's going to be somebody that's mad at him uh -huh. and they want to tell you everything they know about him. A guy named Birdo, that ring a bell. Yeah, everybody knows Birdo. She said she's also saying, no, he's, he's been up here at this apartment for a long while. You're his dad? Yes. Do you have a telephone number we can get a hold of him at? No, I don't know. Of course not. For every nine tips you get, only one of them pans out. Sorry to bother you. I appreciate your time. People love to lie to the police. Sheriff's office. Hey, we didn't wake you, did we? Uh, we're back looking for Roberto again. I uh, know we were out here. He is not here. I've heard the name, but we're not socialized with that man. Nowhere. Do you mind if we check and make sure he's not here? Oh, okay. Awesome. Terribly, terribly sorry to bother you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Another dead end. With Berto nowhere to be found, Jackson turns in for the night, hoping tomorrow will yield bigger results. Meanwhile, over in Ash County, Deputy Jeremy Monday races through the mountains to reach a home possibly burglarized in broad daylight. The alarm's gone off. Uh, I called the homeowner. I know him, and he says nobody should be at that residence. So we're just going to go up here and just check the house, make sure somebody ain't tried to break in. At first off, when you pull up, yeah, you're going to be scared because you don't know what's in there. And if somebody's broke into a house, they're going to do whatever it takes not to get caught, even if that's to shoot an officer, fight an officer, come around the corner and hit an officer in the head, knock them down, try to knock them out so they can get away. God almighty. I've got a window that's unlocked, and it's kind of raised up some. One twenty County, i got an open window. Sheriff's office. Mighty. I got a window that's unlocked and it's kind of raised up some. One twenty county. I got an open window. Deep in the mountains of Ash County, North Carolina. Deputy Jeremy Monday is investigating a possible home invasion. Sheriff's office. With the intruder possibly still hiding inside. Sheriff's office. 
somebody's broke into a house, they're gonna do whatever it takes not to get caught, even if that's the shooting officer. It's got footprints on there. I heard a door slam. You're gonna be scared because you don't know what's behind that door, or what's gonna be behind that wall. It could be nothing or else it could just be the last moment of your life. Somebody could be there behind it with a gun. Sheriff's office. I think this door here is open. Slam that door, so that's what it was. False alarm. He's got a door from the outside that goes into the master bedroom. It had blowed open. Apparently, the wind had blew his bedroom door shut, and that's what caused it to slam. Hey, Tim, your bedroom door, it was blowed open. I don't really think anybody's in here. I think the wind's just done it, and the bottom window was accidentally left open. I guess it's kind of like going through a haunted house and you actually see something or see something move. It, your adrenaline goes up. If you say you're not scared, you're probably lying because it, it's a scary feeling. Seventy miles west, Sullivan County Deputy Travis Jackson is back on the hunt for a suspect he's been after for months, a notorious drug dealer known on the streets as Berto. Berto's driving several different vehicles. He's got so many friends that he's constantly switching vehicles on us. The only thing he's not switching is, is his friends. Berto was recently spotted in a white vehicle with a known associate driving on a suspended license. A white four-door car, we don't know what make or model, but as for catching him on a traffic stop, that would just be luck of the draw. Oh, no, there he is. Bingo. 341-169, he's right up here in front of us, about two cars. The driver of this car in front of us, I don't think he has a license. Also, the passenger could possibly be the Birdo subject we're looking for. Yeah. Hello. Hey, man, you got your driver's license on you? Yeah, I don't have my license. You got no license. If you want to come on, step out here and talk to me there. You said you ain't got nothing on you, right? I got no Okay, just went turn around and face the car there. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to patch it down, make sure you ain't got no weapons, okay? Berto's not in the vehicle, but driving without a license is still a crime. Well, here, go ahead and put your hands behind your back. Deputies step up the pressure. You know, Berto. You can just have your seat, just keep your legs out, and you can finish smoking that. So you don't know Berto, though? We're looking for him. I get some more version of Berto. some more version. How about that? What do you got? I tell you, I know what you're doing. Really? I know what you're doing. But, but here's the thing. Well, we've been looking for Roberto. There's a, there's a few people that's led us astray and everything, so. Well, the, the only problem is you know, we can't take you there and we can't cut you loose and on the on the hopes, you know, cross fingers that it pans out. I can tell you exactly where you're at right now. Honestly, right I'm now? Just, where is it? Right now. I just left this morning, man. I just left this morning. Really? Well, uh, here's what I need. Of course, I need, uh, you know, a location where he's at. Uh, I need to go get him and pick him up and arrest him. I might even be able to work with you on the charges. Yeah. I can't make you not go to jail right now. I but, uh, you know, when you go to court, we can pretty much top deal. Well, here, go ahead and put your hands behind your back. Deputy Travis Jackson is questioning a man he just arrested about the location of one of Sullivan County's most wanted fugitives, the drug dealer, Berto. I'm 
might even be able to work with you on the charges. Yeah. Yeah, when you go to court, we can pretty much top deal. Armed with an exact location, Deputy Jackson and his team will strike later tonight under the cover of darkness. Meanwhile, on the other side of the county, Deputy Michelle Gillum receives a report of a disturbance in progress. Apparently, someone's sitting in a vehicle making threats or something. I don't really know much about this call other than the fact that it's a disturbance. Oh, there's a shotgun involved. What was the vehicle description? It's a white heavy trailblazer. Hayes in that vehicle, talking with a male subject in a red vehicle. 10 I'll be out here. How's it going? It ain't going worse than that either. Okay, is that your shotgun? Yeah, I did. Okay, you got your idea on you? Had a damn mental problem for 10 years and I ain't done a thing about it. Okay. Who was you having a, a altercation with today? Well, I guess my wife. Okay. She's still kid, up there? No, she's at work. The kid didn't go to school and that's not right because she missed three days last week. She's had a perfect attendance all year. And then she turns around and lets her miss today. She didn't send her to school because she was out late last night and none of the kids went to school. And that that's a bunch of I mean, that's just done freaking call. Okay. And how later that night, Deputy Travis Jackson leads a team of officers to where he believes Berto's hiding his girlfriend's apartment complex on the edge of town. We're gonna head down here and see if we can see if that information pans out. And if it does, then Berto will be going to jail. There is a vehicle there and there's lights on, so that, that tells us there's probably somebody there. This is the girlfriend's car. I do think he's in there because you got two of the vehicles here that he's been known to drive. If they are in there, the only reason they wouldn't answer the door is if he's in there with them. So right now we're just seeing if we can make contact the conventional way and then we'll go from there. Jackson's manhunt may finally come to an end. Come to the door, we know you're here. We're not going away, come to the door. Come to the door, we know you're here. Deputy Travis Jackson is on the verge of closing a several month manhunt. We're not going away, come to the door. For one of Sullivan County's most wanted criminals, a known drug dealer, Berto. Officers believe he's hiding here inside his girlfriend's apartment. So you know he's probably in there. We're looking all over the place. No luck tonight, but they're not giving up. Problem is, is we don't have enough right now to make any kind of forced entry. There's certain criteria that has to be met, and this particular situation don't meet it yet. We're, we're just shy of it, though. The likelihood of them leaving anytime tonight is going to be pretty slim. She does work at 11 tomorrow, so she's going to need her car to get to work. They, they can't run. They can't hide. It's just a matter of time. Early in the morning, we 
just got off graveyards. We got some information that there possibly may be somebody getting ready to leave the apartment in the next couple hours, the one we were out the night before looking for Birdo. Myself and Officer Poff's gonna go up here and stake out the residence and see what we can find out. Birdo is not above going out a back window. We're trying to get officers to come help us cover the area. That way, if, if he does come out, then he's basically run right into their arms. Yeah, we're gonna park away from residence a little bit and then walk in. We do have the search warrant, so we can go on in. Here. We have a search warrant. Huh? We have a warrant for his arrest. We Let me see. I do have to advise you if he is here and we find him, you both will be arrested. He hasn't well. been here since last year. All right. <laughs> Who else is here? Nobody. Here. We only ask as a courtesy. This allows us to come in and search. We got on pretty good sources that he was staying here. I mean, you can look around, but. That's fine. Y'all are harassing me. I'm getting tired of it. I didn't told y'all I don't know where he's at. I'm like, I have babies. That's one of these kids is. No. Y'all are harassing. Then why didn't you answer the door last night and tell us that? What do you mean? I didn't hear y'all knocking. I must have been asleep. We even heard you this morning laughing and joking about not answering the door. We will be back again. Keep coming. I don't care. He's not here. I don't talk to him. But I'm just telling you where it's leading. It's leading to your arrest. We were suspecting that he was pretty much going to be in there, but he wasn't. We've still got a few leads that we can come up with. Any manhunt that we conduct, it's going to produce the person. Birdo will be in custody. I feel 100% confident he will be caught. Six days later, Deputy Jackson gets some good news. Berto had tried to make a run for it outside of our county. He was headed towards Nashville. He runs a red light. Officer initiates a traffic stop on him. I seen that light. He admits that he does not have a license. Officer found out that he was wanted through our county, so he subsequently made the arrest. Get in there. He was also with his girlfriend at the time. And they admitted they were on their way to California until the heat died down. So we just made it down there. Now we're back in Sullivan County, and Berto's here at Sullivan County Jail. If he does get out of jail, it is more difficult to track him the second time. It's no different from playing a video game. The more you play it, the, the better you're gonna get at it. It's gonna become a better criminal. You can try to run, you can try to hide, but you're just delaying the inevitable. In the end, Southern justice will be served.